It's 2024. Do you really want to be bogged down creating your intranet in a tool like SharePoint? Or do you want to create your own customized intranet in just a few clicks of a button? Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we're a Softer implementation partner. If you haven't gotten started with Softer, you can do so for free using the link in the description below. So once you're logged inside of Softer, you can go ahead and click on the Team Wiki, or you can search for a new application and find the one you're looking for. We'll click on that Team Wiki, and we can see from these icons that this is available both for Airtable as well as Google Sheets. These are going to be the back end that powers your front end Softer application. In today's example, we're going to take a look at Google Sheets, but this works equally as well with Airtable. From here, we can choose where we're going to store that data. So if you haven't done it before, you can add a new data source and set this up with Google Sheets. And we'll go ahead and connect this. And this is going to copy all of our information that we need to Google Sheets. Now, if I go into my Google Drive, we'll see that it's created a new file for us. And this is because this is going to give all of the data that we need to be able to power that software application. So here we can see it's actually created a few different sheets. The first one is our employee directory. And this represents each individual row is a different employee within our organization. And then here we have our news. This could be things like webinars and blog posts, interviews, emails. And you'll notice this is a drop down. You can change these values. You don't have to use the existing values. In fact, we can add our own custom fields, our own custom columns that we want too, because really it's up to us how we want to configure this. Next up, we have team resources, and this is information that we want to make available for our team. We've got links to different images here. We can see which team this is available for. Obviously, these download URLs are fictitious. They're made up here, but we can change all of that information so that we can make the correct URLs available for our team. And then finally, we have feedback. This is gonna show up as comments that we can collect information from our team. And we can decide, is this information we wanna take and display to everyone, or do we just want this to be available to executives to help make decisions based on the feedback? So now we're ready to go to our software application. We can click on this. This is gonna spin up inside of Software Studio, the actual look and feel of the application that we're building. So you'll notice right off the bat, this looks really nice. We don't have to build this all entirely from scratch. Of course, we can configure any components that we want. So right here, we can see that we've got a nice little directory homepage where we can see links to the different elements like company news, employee directory, and any of these elements on the page can be configured. Next, I'm gonna click on our users here, and this is gonna take us to a table of all of our users that we have. This is synced bi-directionally with Google Sheets. So what this means is that the users themselves are actually coming from that employee directory, that this is governing who has access inside of Softer to be able to access our intranet. Now, what's really cool about Softer is that we can actually manage our users in different user groups, which will control who can access what and who can do what inside of the application we're building. So I can click on user groups and you can see by default, it's already created an employee's user group and a manager's user group and we can add as many as we want. So maybe we want a different group for contractors because contractors, we only want to see a subset of our intranet. Now, let me go ahead and click on this managers group and edit that. Now we could add users to this manually, but the reality is, is especially if we're managing this at scale, we probably want to automatically manage our users and we can do this based on different conditions. So what this is saying is if the department is executive, then we're going to label this person as a manager. Instead, if they're an employee and we click on that, then this is going to be everybody else. So we've got if department is not executive. And that data, again, is pulling actually from the Google Sheet itself. So you can see that department. In this case, we've got sales product executive. So Pat Everett is going to be an executive, going to be part of that managers group, where it looks like everybody else is going to be an employee based on the department that they're part of. So let's take a look at what the internet looks like out of the box by previewing this as our different employees. I'm gonna go ahead and click the little preview icon and you'll notice the first thing that happens is I'm a non-logged in user. So in this case, because it's an intranet, most intranets, we don't want anybody to see anything unless they're actually logged in as an employee. Now, that being said, software is super powerful. So if you wanted to create some external facing landing pages, Maybe you have some onboarding documents for people who are not yet employees. You could still create those pages 
and create a more tailored experience for external users as well. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Kai, who should be an employee. So right now I'm logged in as Kai and I should be able to see most of the information in our intranet. So I can click on our news and we could go into our directory to be able to see our different teammates. Maybe I want to drill down and see some information about our CEO so I can actually click from that grid of records into this individual record. We've got some docs up at the top if we wanna refresh ourselves on our company policy. And then here we've got our feedback area and this is where we could submit information via a form. This doesn't require any external form. This is all part of software and we could leave that feedback for our team. Now you'll notice that Kai doesn't actually see the feedback from other people around her. She's only using this to submit information and this is going to go to our executive team. Well, let's log in as Pat, who's part of the executive team. In his case, he'll be able to log that information, submit that feedback via the form. But if we scroll down, notice that because he's part of that manager team, he also sees all of the employee feedback that's been submitted. So let's see how this is manifested inside of Software Studio itself. We can click on our pages and we'll go down to our feedback page. And when this loads, what we can see is that we actually have our submit the feedback, the form up here, and then we've got a different block down below for the employee feedback. Now you can add a bunch of these different blocks here. You can click here, and this is where we have all sorts of different options. Dynamic blocks are gonna be pulling data that we have inside of Google Sheets or Airtable, depending on which backend you're using. And then we also have static blocks, and this is really good for design elements so that we can tailor the page to look the way we want it to. But the important part here is that we can control the access to who can do what on this page. We're on the feedback page. So in this case, let's take a look at that employee feedback, the information itself. And if we click on that block, we can go over to visibility. And this is what's controlling. Remember when Pat could see the feedback, but not Kai. Well, this is because we're saying only logged in users can see this. And then only the manager's user group can see this. So because Kai was an employee and not a manager, she wasn't able to see this at all. But what if we wanted Kai and the other employees to see the feedback if it had been reviewed? We don't want them to see everything because we want to, you know, massage it a little bit and make sure it's okay. But if it's been approved, we're okay if they see that feedback. Well, look how easy this is to do. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate this block. So we're actually going to have two different copies of this block. This first one, again, is only available to the managers. So we're leaving that visibility as only the managers. Now this second block, let's go ahead and click and we're gonna set the visibility here. And instead of managers, now we want this to be only the employees are going to see this block because we don't want people to see two copies of the same block. We just want them to see the right block depending on their role. Now let's go ahead and click on the source and this is where we can add different conditional filters. And there's so many combinations of what we can do with conditional filters. For example, we could say, I only want to see records that I created as a user. In this case, we're just gonna add a really simple condition. We're going to say, let's go ahead and set if the status is not, and then we'll say if it is not, not reviewed, then we'll go ahead and display it. So basically if it's reviewed, we're gonna go ahead and show this to the employees. So now if we're logged in as Pat, we scroll down and we can see all of that information because he's an executive. But if we switch over to Kai, then she's going to be able to see both that form. And if we scroll down, she can see this information because we've already reviewed and approved this piece of feedback. There's so much more you can do with softer, such as customizing the theme, the look and the feel of your website, adding your own custom domain, adding additional integrations and more. Get started with softer today by clicking the link in the description below.